What? Evolution for toddlers? And then you think, yeah, evolution for toddlers. Well, hello. Uh, I'm really excited to say that um, we're approaching $20,000 with our Kickstarter. Um, it would mean a lot to me if you would back this book. Approaching $20,000. She lived a long, 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 long time ago. She could wiggle and swim fast. Can you wiggle? Guys, can you wiggle? Oh, uh, Tracy can wiggle. Good job. And she had chaws to chomp with. Can you chomp? <laughs> The scientific method is, must be observable and repeatable. So could you give me one piece of observable evidence for Darwinian evolution? Okay, I would point to, as one great example is, look at the genetics of the stickleback. What's that? Uh, so stickleback fish are a very interesting collection of species that were recently isolated after the end of the ice age. What have they become? They're, they're various species of sticklebacks. They stayed as fish? Well, of course. What? Okay, there's grandmother fish, cousin shark, cousin ray finned fish, grandmother reptile. Grandmother fish had many kinds of grandchildren. They could wiggle and chomp. Can you find our grandmother reptile? Right here. Yeah. This is our grandmother reptile. She lived a long, 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 long time ago. Four. Four. One, two, three, you're right. She could crawl across the ground. Can you crawl? Crawl. No, except, can you crawl? Nice. And she could breathe air in and out. In and out. And in and out. Nice. Grandmother Reptile also had many kinds of grandchildren. They could wiggle and chomp and crawl and breathe. There's Reptile. Can you find our grandmother Mammal? Yeah, Which one of these would be a mammal? Mammal. Mm -hmm. What kind of a mammal is that? A tree mammal. A tree mammal? Maybe. Of course. Human beings are still fish. Human beings are fish? Why, yes, of course they are. What? Her babies could squeak when they were hungry. Mm. Can you squeak? <laughs> and she could cuddle with her babies and feed them up milk. Can you cuddle? Mm. Oh, 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 oh. I love your cuddles. <laughs> Grandmother Mammal had many kinds of grandchildren. They could wiggle and chomp and crawl and breathe and cuddle and squeak. Can you find our grandmother ape? Hmm, let's see, right there. Yeah. There's a picture of her. This is our grandmother ape. She lived a long, long time ago. Three. Try that again. A long, long time ago. Two. Yeah. And here's her. What's she have on her back? A baby. A baby. 
she could grab branches and climb. Can you grab? <laughs> Snack. <laughs> yep. She could hoop when she was happy. Can you hoop? <laughs> Grandmother Ape had many kinds of grandchildren. They could wiggle and chomp and crawl and breathe and cuddle and squeak and grab and hoop. Really? That's a grand. Yeah, we're all related. See the path? Grandmother oh. Ape is related to Cousin Gibbon and Cousin Orangutan, Cousin Gorilla. And look, starting to walk a little bit more upright. Cousin Chimp and Grandmother Human. Yeah. Can you find our Grandmother Human? You already found her. Good job. There she is. Human. This is our Grandmother Human. She lived a long time. Time ago. She could walk on two feet. Can you walk? Sure you can. And she could talk to other humans. Can you talk? Yes. Can you talk, Siri? Yes. Good job. Grandmother human had many kinds of grandchildren. They could wiggle and chomp and crawl and breathe and cuddle and squeak, squeak and grab and hoot and walk and talk and I see one of them right here. Would you give me an example of Darwinian evolution, not adaptation or speciation, but a change of kinds? <laughs> These are changes of kinds. They're still fish. They're distinctly different fish. What? Right here. <laughs> Two of them, right here, and one of them, right here. Which one are you, do you think? Mm. This one. That one? Aw, oh, big sister and little sister. Uh, All right, and let's see. This is Mama, this is Dada. The end. Yeah, we are all grandchildren of Grandmother Human. And then yeah, that really is the end. It talks we're really, a little. We're really children of Grandmother Human. Yeah, we're all. And it starts really... out of a fish. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty cool. So a we fish? are fish. I thought that it was really fantastic how it's a, evolution is a very complex subject to grasp and it really simplified it and it made it um, easy for my kids to comprehend and see those connections. The cousins and you know the individual branches, the you know these kinds of diagrams. I think the six-year-old who's very sciencey is gonna zero in on that and uh, and kind of ask lots of questions and say, wait, cousin dinosaur, how's that related to us? And you know he's got elements from various TV shows and things like birds related to dinosaurs. So I think it'll help him start uh, fitting some of the pieces of the puzzle together. I thought it was fun. Well, uh, why was it fun? Because I liked how it taught you how humans actually came alive. And how did they actually come alive? Well, they started out as animals, and then they eventually became a monkey and then a human. A lot of the work that I do has been concerned with scientific detail and I have a love for getting just the right line on the scientific detail. And for this book, I'm going to back off from that a bit. And look for not only the right details, but to look for the shape of the bigger truth. Maybe I can make a literary comparison that Rather than an essay, I'm looking for a visual style that will pare things down almost to a haiku. Is a lively interaction of shapes and forms that really get at the emotional essence of those critters. Grandmother fish, grandmother ape, grandmother human. So that there is a real emotion in the very form and shape.
Ever since my daughter was little 15 years ago, I've been trying to figure out how to teach evolution to very young children. I finally figured it out. and condenses it down to the very marrow of the issue. Just the idea that you would tell the story of evolution in a way that would be simple enough for a two-year-old or three-year-old to really grab onto is thrilling. <laughs> when Darwin came up with his theory of evolution, he knew that people were gonna hate the idea that humans were descended from animals. In fact, 150 years later, plenty of people still hate that idea. My dad used to tell me creation stories from all around the world, but this was the creation story that stuck with me the longest and has really changed the way I look at the world because now I see that all living beings and you know all the animals around the world are really interconnected. You know, creationists have their own origin story and they've got plenty of books about Adam and Eve that they can give to their toddlers. We need the same thing. We need books for our very youngest children that tells them where we all came from. The adults are bound to learn something too from this book. The kids section takes up two-thirds of the pages but the rest is filled with good hard science for the adults. Something to help them give a scientific context to the fun story that their kids are learning. You know, creationists have their own origin story and they've got plenty of books about Adam and Eve that they can give to their toddlers. We need the same thing. <laughs> Is there an idea more radical in the history of the human race than turning your children over to total strangers who you know nothing about and having those strangers work on your child's mind out of your sight for a period of 12 years. Could there be a more radical idea than that? Back in colonial days in America, if you proposed that as an idea, they'd burn you at the stake, you mad person. It's a mad idea. A creature that offers tantalizing clues to the evolution of all life on Earth including us. A great primitive fish, a coelacanth. The press played up the idea of a missing link, an idea also derived from Darwin's theory of evolution. Darwin proposed that life came out of the sea, evolving from fishes to amphibians to mammals to us over millions of years. Was the coelacanth a missing link? That interim step from water to land. Was this fish the key to understanding our own evolution? Out of the water. And when they discovered the living fossil, they said, that's it, our ancestor. It's alive. Dr. Malone said, when he saw the fish, why it's very ugly, and is this where we came from? Coelacanths are close relatives of the fish that scientists consider was the ancestor of all land animals. Yes, the professor says the fish is a kind of ancestor of man. Poor fish. Not only did it have strange limb-like fins, it had no real backbone. Instead, Smith found a more primitive structure called a notochord. This is part of the notochord of the coelacanth that was dissected here. And it's simply a, a, a hollow tube, it's a gristly tube, which extends from just behind the brain right through into the tail. And it's filled with a light oil under a very slight pressure. This kind of oil-filled skeletal structure is unique. Most adult vertebrates have well-developed backbones, especially those that live on land, including human beings. Once again, the press trumpeted the coelacanth as the missing link, a creature that bridged the gap between fish and primitive land animals. Why coelacanths have survived for 400 million years. Their outward appearance has changed little, but internally, they must have adapted to changing environments. 
And there was something surprising about the way these limb-like fins moved. Although the coelacanth was not using them to crawl on the bottom, to the expert eye, their motion hinted at walking. Walking like we do. That placed it in that evolutionary line towards higher vertebrates. If the coelacanth swims like a land animal walks, does that too suggest it's our closest living relative among the fishes? To this day, the evidence is inconclusive. Until recently, most researchers put coelacanths nearest to tetrapods on an evolutionary tree. But now, a group known as lungfish is thought to be an even closer ancestor, based on new DNA evidence. We may never know for certain which group of fishes contains our closest living relative. I first saw the coelacanth probably in about 1956. The original mounted specimen in the East London Museum. To me, it was this fantastic creature from the past, which gave us a window into the past and made us kind of realize life began in the sea. From the sea, the, the, the vertebrate, the backbone animals crawled out onto land, and that's where the evolution of, of terrestrial vertebrates started. What? <laughs> yeah, evolution for toddlers.